Hey everybody, uh, we wanted to go through maybe a, a fun little project for you guys if you're looking for something kind of creative to do with your, uh, with your equipment. So I've kind of made it a tradition for my wife that I build her these aluminum present boxes. And I do this for Christmas, but obviously you can do it for any time of the year. But we were gonna go through and show you how I make one of these real quick. So we'll go through the layout, some of the measuring, a um, little bit of the calculation, and then some of the technique on making you know, making this ribbon look like it's uh, not stiff aluminum. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna do this without using like a box and pan break or a, a sheet metal break. So we're gonna cut out five individual squares for our bottom portion of the box. And that'll help us determine how big our lid needs to be. So we just did these five by five. So just a real simple, you know, with a speed square, it's five inches, five inches, and then spread it out to 10, made our next line 10 inches and 10 inches. So we'll cut these five out real quick on the bandsaw and then we'll, uh, we'll put them together, show you guys how to square them up. We'll weld this out so we can get our overall measurement for our lid and then I'll show you guys how to get your lid to fit nice and tight. <clears throat> All right, now that we got our base or our bottom part of the box cut out, go ahead and clean up these edges. You're pretty much gonna be welding every single edge top, bottom, side. So you want to go ahead and clean up all your edges, make sure they're deburred, they don't have any oil on them, tack them up and then we'll, uh, we'll weld it out. All right, so here we got our base all tacked up, you know, almost building a cube. And I try to get like a nice inside corner to inside quarter fit up, but there's a couple of the spots where I didn't get the box super square. And so I've got a little, you know, a little overhang or it's a little inset, but we're not going to the moon with it. It doesn't need to be, you know, super precise. It'll all uh, cover up anyway. Plus it's good practice on like poor fit up, which is one of our videos too. You can go back and watch. So it's a good practice piece and you get to make something kind of, uh, kind of fun for your spouse. So now we've got our base all welded up. We're ready to make our top. Now we know that we were five inches square. So plus material thickness, we're coming out uh, about five and a 16th. So if we make this top five and three eighths by five and three eighths with like a one inch lip around it, it'll fit nice and tight, but it won't be, you know, super loose. So we'll do that. We'll do a five and three eighths wide top and we'll do a one inch lip all the way around it. So because we weren't using the break, we'll do the same thing. We'll cut out a five and three eighths square and then we'll just cut a strip that's one inch and we'll cut it down into a uh, you know, the length to match our sides, which will be about five and three eighths. All right, so we know we our squares were five by five on the bottom side. And we ran a one inch lip on our lid. So obviously we know that's gonna be four inches. If you're building these to a, a different size, it's not super standard like that, then measuring them you know, can come in handy. But we know these are gonna be four inches. So for our top, we know we have a one inch and then about five and a half with the weld and then another one inch. So we're gonna cut a, two strips at seven and a half inches and four strips at four inches by one inch wide. All right, because we know our box is five inches wide and we have a one inch wide strip, to center this strip, it's just gonna be two inches over. So I'm gonna go through and measure a high point and a low point of two inches on all four sides. We'll go ahead and weld these in. We know we made our box five by five. We oversized our lid to five and three eighths. So with the weld profile on these outside corners, it brings us to right at five and a half. So in order to center our one inch wide strip, we're going over a two and a quarter from each side. That'll center our strip. You can see I already got one made for here. So I need to cut my other strip. I'm gonna take a one inch section out of the center of it and tie it in here and I'll weld the whole thing all the way around. 
All right, so now we've got the top pieces of our ribbon cut out. See, I took section to one inch out of this one. And what we'll do is once I tack this, I'll tack it here on the corner. I can use my ball peen and actually knock that break in a little bit and tighten that up. So if we're not having a, like a brake press or a sheet metal break, just banging these over the side of the table, get you close enough, do a little tack, little tack and beat, and you can get that to fill in real nice so you don't have a, a gap there. All right, so now that we've got the top and the sides done with our ribbon around the, uh, the top and sides, it's time to lay out the bow. So I like to make the bow a little bit wider than I made the rest of the ribbon. So since we made our ribbon an inch wide, we're gonna go two inches wide here with this bow. So we'll just lay out a couple strips of two inch wide. We'll get some long cuts. And for the bow, you can go about eight inches. Now these, are be, these will be like our tails. So we'll go ahead and mark this at eight. You know, you kind of want that split end. So we're gonna mark, and I'm just pulling numbers out. Three looks pretty good. So we'll go three inches. We know we're two inch wide. So there's our center. So then we will take and lay out our tail. So we'll remove this center triangle and then we can kind of bend these tails up and make them look like they're, they're wavy. Let me mark this other side. All right, so now that we've got the tails of our ribbon cut out, I'll show you guys how to form these, uh, these little ends that they don't just look like a straight piece. So I'm just gonna put a little curve into them up and then kind of roll them back down. So using something like the edge of the square tube works really well for that. So we'll just kind of bend them up, give them a little bit of a curb, try not to make them super even. And then you can just kind of take and just give them a little bit of <clears throat> three-dimensional look. So they kind of look like they're flowing. You just kind of take and overlap these on your box. Just kind of pick an angle that, you know, you want to show off a little bit of the ribbon so you don't cover it all up. So something kind of like that. And I like to offset the ribbons and not put them directly in the center. So we'll kind of go with something like that. Generally, I'll tack these. I'll kind of nip off these corners that overhang. And then I'll show you guys how to make the final piece of the bow and we're all set. All right, so now that we have the ribbon or the tails of our ribbon complete, it's time to make the bow. So since we made these tails two inches wide, I'm gonna do the same with the rest of the bow. So we'll just lay out another two inch strip. So generally what I'll do is I'll just cut this strip out and then there's no real scientific way I do it. I just cut out a strip. I just pick a spot to start folding and I'll fold that end over, fold this end over. And if they don't match up, I'll tack them, cut out that center section and put them together, tack them, and then we'll put them on the present and finish out that weld. So just a little bit of interpretation here. So I'll go ahead and cut this strip out and I'll show you guys how I fold those over. All right, so if you don't have anything fancy, it's like we're using the handle of this uh, rubber mallet. Let's kind of pick a good point. That looks pretty decent there. And we just press, oh, the clamp has to hold them. All right, so after you get the bows of your ribbon made, I like to leave one of them with like a quarter to a half inch of lip. Gives you a nice place to tack it. And then the other one overlaps it like that. It gives you a real nice place to get the weld in there. You can kind of just wrap over the top. So we get this one tacked. You want to line them up with the seam or the center of your, of your tails. All right, so now we've got the top of our bow welded on. So, you know, it looks like a nice little present bow and you are done. I think we've got about an hour and 45 minutes in this. Um, without the camera gear and, and doing it myself, I can probably do one of these in about an hour and 15, hour and a half. So not super labor intensive. You can knock one out pretty quick and it makes a really cool like keepsake or, you know, little knickknack on the shelf after you're done using it. So if you can't wrap, but you can weld, there you go. Uh, I'm Jesse McCollum with Everlast Welders. Remember, 
Well mean, well green.